Welcome to Forgotten Forest for this 2v2. Over here on the left side of the map, playing the blue, playing black hand. Give it up for Bankai 2022. I don't know that he really needed the year in his name, but the double black hand team, this is Bart Jones. He's playing yellow. He is also playing black hand. We don't have the, uh, the recolor feature turned on today. We are just going to be letting them roll with the colors that they chose. So uh, chaos may come, but I think we'll be okay. Playing Reaper 17 with those shielded harvesters. This is Sir John's. And kicking it as green vanilla nod. This, uh, did he go refinery, refinery, war factory? Okay, this is prophecy. Uh, definitely an unorthodox build, but hey, you know what? It's a 2v2. You are allowed to do whatever you want. And as you can see, it's blue and yellow versus cyan and green. So uh, we're a little bit, uh, you know, we got some blues on both sides. I guess it could have been blue and cyan versus yellow and green. That would have been a better, better color combo. But again, we're not recoloring this. We're just letting the players express themselves as they want, like with an MCV cell. And uh, also with this double refinery, uh, you know, everyone else probably went refinery war factory refinery. Well, maybe not Bart Jones. He's not a big believer in two refineries. He is a big believer in flame tanks and in getting scouted as well. So he's going double war factory. It's a bit of an all in. It is a 2v2. So there's always a chance for your ally to be your shield as you recover. It's not necessarily as do or die as it can be in a 1v1. But of course, it all depends on the nitty gritty, the details and how all things play out. Four bikes versus a bike and a buggy. But the flame tank is going to be the potential real killer coming in here for Bart Jones. He stops to attack a buzzer and he's going to be pushing on in. Now he is playing black hand, so he's got those upgraded flame tanks. They come out vet one and that guy's burning down a lightning spike. Not what you typically go for as your primary number one target with a flame tank. But in this case, he might be kind of trying to split the difference between the war factory and the Finder. He's going to try and scoop into the gap, and he will get nothing. He will get neither, but he might get a harvester on the exit. One harvester down? That's a question mark at the end. Oh, these shard walkers do a lot of damage, and Prophecy has been pivoting like a madman. He's been on the dance floor learning those new moves. Is that zero harvesters down? I think that might be zero <laughs> harvesters down. My man Prophecy sitting here with four harvesters, two refineries, feeling good, feeling nice. Prophecy at 6.3K income. Bankai up there at 8.6. Sir John's at a cool nine. And Bart Jones, wah, wah, wah at a lowly 4K per minute. His income has taken a hit and you can definitely see that reporting on the UI there. That's the price you pay for this rush. And that is the exact kind of thing that you're trying to equalize. And it just hasn't happened yet. Now this Harvester did take damage, but it did get healed back up to full. So this is five basically full health Harvesters that Bart Jones is rolling in on. Rocket squads are coming in. Bikes popping out one by one by Prophecy. He's also got that War Factory down in the south, feeding in more reinforcements. But Bart Jones is spreading his damage across almost every unit possible. He's popping those bikes one by one, but it's going to be the Shard Walkers that come in for that extra bit of defense. By the way, I should mention this is R1. Oh, this is 1.02 plus. R19J. So yes, yes, this is a bit of an older replay. This is not new, hot, or fresh. Well, I mean, it might be hot. We'll find out by the end if this is a hot replay or not. That's a lot of Scorpion tanks. Bankai, on the other hand, he has been sitting back, taking it easy, and putting that 9K per minute to good use. He's got himself a couple of Shard Walkers to chew through, and most of the Scorpion tanks say adios as they reverse move out of there. And they don't even have reverse move. They just exit 
uh, house left as the uh, harvesters come back under threat and it's going to be bikes committing into the attack they will finally get their first harvester it is full of tiberium it is out on the edge of the field there and this is a lot of bike buggy plus a flame tank plus the delay on the economy all for one harvester kill behind the scenes barton jones's economy has not recovered much at all he has probably recovered a little bit. Uh, he's probably doing a bit better than he was. These Scorpion tanks rolling in, helping to even the odds. Shardwalkers going down. Bike Buggy swarming in from Prophecy. He's looking for that defense, and the Shardwalkers are getting focused by the Scorpions. The recommitment might have been worth it if he gets the final kills. Down in the south, it looks like nothing is happening, and Bart Jones still hanging around with just a couple of bikes. But the Shardwalker army has been extinguished. It is going to be up to Tripod Tech. Most of the Harvesters are still here. I think one of them ended up going down but it was mostly scorpions versus shard walkers and the result is going to be the scorpions are still standing even the tripod going down there and sir john's in prophecy they are low on cash trying to get this defense out and the harvesters are finally going to exit down to the south Bike Buggy coming in. Okay, Bart Jones is finally getting his kills. It's finally all paying off. And that Scorpion Tank army coming in has saved this attack, saved this aggression from Bart Jones from being irrelevant. Harvester's going down, tripod's going down, main base is getting shut down, tech could be under threat as well. Prophecy rolling in with a couple of Scorpion tanks, reinforcements are crossing the map. Bart Jones is coming back in with his bike buggy, which is desperately needed to keep these weakened Scorpion tanks alive and online. Scorpion tanks, more reinforcements coming in from Prophecy. They're getting jumped on. They're getting pummeled by Bart Jones and the Scorpions up north continuing to work away at that Scrin infrastructure. Every unit that gets popped out just falls apart. And this is one of those games that at first it wasn't working and then those Scorpion tanks tipped the balance in favor of Bankai and Bart Jones. Down in the south, Prophecy and Sir Johns are working on those expansions. Maybe they will be able to roll out of this by utilizing those expansions if they can muster enough defense down in the south. But they're gonna have to be rebuilding a lot of infrastructure to make that work. Bart Jones is still extremely weak on the infrastructure and economy. So as this main base expires, it's still going to be up to Bankai to do a lot of the heavy lifting here. Scorpion tanks surrounding that tripod. They'll get another kill. The descent numbers almost getting up to a healthy amount, but they just keep getting cut down. And now with a fresh tripod out, more scorpions rolling in from the south. Bankai has finally been pushed back. His income sitting at plus 10k. He is pretty comfortable with his expansion here. He'd be more comfortable if he had a second refinery because the main bases have been eaten up. It's all about the expansions. I mean, there's a bit of Tiberium back here on this main base. But down in the south, Prophecy and Sir John's, this is where their base really is. Sir John's with only one refinery down there a little bit less eco than he would like. Bart Jones still extremely weak on economy. He has managed to sneak out four Scorpion tanks, but he never rebuilt that MCV. He has just been working off of the stuff that he originally built when he sold that MCV. So it's very much been a what you see is what you get kind of a play. Harvester taking some damage. Bart Jones will be able to cover for his Harvester as it heads back to the main base. Then he'll at least get some blue Tiberium, you know, help extend out that income a little bit further. Big Scorpion tank build up by Bonkai coming down to the south side of the map. Prophecy, he stepped out onto the map. We'll see if he gets crushed out here in the open. One or two Scorpions will go down, but he will be able to trade back some hits. He's got a decent number of Scorpion tanks here, so as this slow beginning of Bankai's forces show up, he was trading okay in the beginning. Decoy army to try and absorb some of those shots, will absorb some of the early shots from those Scorpions, but Bankai and Bart Jones just keep pressing forward. 
And this might be too much damage. The defense from Sir John's is so far away. It feels like a lifetime away as these scorpions descend upon this base and Prophecy gets eaten up. But the tripods and descents are here. They're here to chase away these scorpions. And unlike last time, it's not just one tripod popping out at a time, one descent squad popping out at a time. This is a lot of firepower if they could ever get in range of the tanks. Bart Jones and Bankai pull out to the right, and they're gonna try and keep the damage up. Shooting a couple of these Harvesters and those Reaper 17 shielded Harvesters really coming in handy in this moment. They will exit up to the north, and Bankai and uh, Prophecy and Sir John's give chase, following the Scorpion tanks a little bit further up. Harvesters getting targeted. Prophecy and Sir John's, they have been doing okay on the income side of things, but the two of them together barely match up to Bonkai. Just shows you the power of that free expansion that he got in the middle of the map. No pressure, under no under threat, nothing to worry about. That attack did not accomplish nearly as much as Bonkai and Bart Jones wanted. Reminded me a bit of those early attacks where Bart Jones was throwing everything against the wall and it just wasn't getting very much value. And then the Scorpion tanks rolled in, but in this case, the Scorpion tanks rolling in might actually be headed from the other direction and be joined by these descents and some tripods. Where are the tripods? Uh, why are the tripods back at home? This attack is going on. There's so much stuff here. And the tripods are just back at home. No help for their friends on the front line. And uh, everything pulls back. Uh, you, you know, eight scorpion tanks end up retreating from that front line. And I guess they just, they're just allowed to escape. Uh... Wow, if uh, these six, eight tripods had been there on the front line, that might have been a different fight. Especially if they were charged up. You got that Reaper 17 green beam charge. Scorpions from Prophecy moving back into position. Sir Johns is now ready to go. He's rolling into the base. He might be able to do this just by himself. Taking down Harvesters, taking down uh, Avatars, taking down Scorpions all in one fell swoop. And he moves in close to the Purifier, so they do get their flame weapons to uh, be brought to bear against these tripods. But the EMP locking down those Avatars, and two more Avatars rolling in from the left. Bankai is out of cash. His 118,000 credits that he has gathered has pretty much all been spent and these tripods were not part of the equation he did not have enough for these tripods redeemer coming in but the tier three being under threat means that the redeemer can't even be built the engineering facility is here but uh not anything will be happening with it the end of the purifiers the end of the Redeemer for now. The MCB gets killed as well. And back in the main base, Bike Buggy swarms in. Bart Jones has never stopped attacking the main base with his Bike Buggy. And Bonkai is pretty well done and dusted at his expansion. Maybe he's got, oh, he doesn't have anything down here. That's just Bart Jones down there. And Bonkai, left to his own devices instead bart jones is going for the harass in the north in the south hitting the harvesters it doesn't do anything to stop these tripods but he might be able to get these other engineers might be able to get the last engineer okay he does get the last engineer but not before an avatar and a tripod have been recovered scorpion tanks are here and the Scorpion tanks will get eaten up by these tripods, even if they don't have those upgraded beams, those charged up Tiberium beams. Uh, they're still going to chew through those tripods. Bike Buggy sweeping through the expansion once again. 
Barton Jones relentless in his attacks. He just never stops. And uh, that very well may be the end of the game there. The GG, I imagine, coming out from the Bart Jones uh, Bankai team. Lots of aggression in that game, but in the end, tripods win. It's hard to beat the lasers. When you've got eight lasers shooting, or uh, I guess 21 lasers, uh, 24 lasers shooting at your base, knocking on your door, it's, uh, it's hard to stop all those lasers. Welcome to Tournament Rift. It has truly been a long, long time since I have seen this map, but these players didn't have a lot of choice when they went into this game as far as what map they were going to play because this is an original 1.02 Kane's Wrath game spawning as the orange not on the right hand. This is Nighthawk. And playing the yellow GDI on the left side. This is is valentine 20 valen valentine not not quite valentine but valentine 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 anyways it's a 1.02 game and this guy is going for all three tib spikes i don't know if that was intentional or not but in the original in 1.02 if you're nod or gdi or you know one of their sub factions you actually don't capture the tib spike as fast as possible on this map you park your engineer next to the tib spike and you wait until you build a refinery because if you don't have the refinery you don't get the 500 dollar cash back that's one of those things that uh it kind of makes sense, but it's really unintuitive to how you expect things to happen. But essentially that $500 cash back gets blocked by the fact that you can't accept any more Tiberium. The 10 grand that you start with is already sort of uh, over balance for, uh, for how much money you're supposed to have. It's like, hey, you've got too much Tiberium and not enough silos. And as a result, you don't get your cash back. Now, of course, Scrin, no problem with that. But I say all that, uh, I guess, just to highlight all of the differences. How far we've come. What it means to be a 1.02 plus player and not a vanilla Kane's Wrath player. So yeah, vanilla Kane's Wrath. Uh, GDI versus Nod. Boy, we're reaching into the archive here. And I don't know. It's kind of the same. Scorpion tanks were good. Ooh, we're going for operations center on one base. So this is not a fast expand at all. It's like, I don't know, pit bulls are good in both versions. Juggernauts are good. A lot of the, a lot of the GDI nod stuff is the same. I mean, we just on stream, we just watched a 1.02 plus R19 game. And uh, it, you know, it was bike buggy and mass scorpions. And that was the same in the original 1.02. So some things are very similar between them and then other things are very different. But I just I just realized this GDI guy never got a second refinery and I don't know what is up with that. That seems like a bit of an oversight. We shall see if it works out. Uh, okay, he does have a second refinery. Very strange refinery placements here. And the the sort of result of all of this slow harvester build, uh, slow refinery, is his income is indeed falling behind that of the Nod player. He's now a thousand credits per minute behind the income of the Nod player. Now that might disappear. He spent a lot of money on these pit bulls. So hopefully these pit bulls are able to make up for the fact that he severely delayed his second refinery, all of his additional harvesters to get out this mass of pit bulls. He gets himself one scorpion for hit and that is some heavy splash damage on those harvesters. That was an amazing piece of splash damage on those harvesters tripling up. And because of that, he's gonna get all 
all three harvesters. He's going to have to commit a couple of extra pit bulls to get it, but he gets all three harvesters there, and that completely guts the main base economy of this not player. So I guess it was worth it. You don't normally get the stack on three harvesters like that, but if you do, it's uh that's really good so that is not something that you see very often and i guess he did also go for the uh the triple engineer opener which is pretty expensive to do but if you get all three of the tip spikes then it is very much worth it however he only got two of the tip spikes Command post gets added on, upgrades all three power plants, starts AP ammo, and this flame tank is like, uh, where's the expansion? Now, fortunately for Nighthawk, he was able to eke out an expansion in the south. He never lost his tib spike, so he always had that income tick, tick, ticking away. And Nighthawk is going to be able to recover, but man, Valentine has recovered economically up to 9k per minute with this eco boom following up. Uh, goes for the upgraded power plant. Interesting. Uh, Could have gone maybe command post or for the refinery. And we'll get two power plants. I'm not sure that that flame tank uh, got as much as he could have, but AP ammo is, you know, 80, 90% done, and it will finish up. Black Hand Squad in the north indicates the sell off of that operations center, and a couple of rocket squads in the south just to act as a guard. But man, as it turns out, killing all of your opponent's harvesters and then they have to scrape out a refinery at their expansion is a great way to shut down their production and their game plan. Nighthawk slowly rebuilding his economy just like piece by piece. And uh, well... Pitbull's pretty bad at killing infantry, but they do eventually get there with the help of that watchtower. And the MCV still has not had, uh, has not gone out for an expansion. And, uh, well, Milton Squad just killed a Rifleman Squad. Not, uh, not something you see very often. Let's see how many shots it takes these Pitbulls to hit the infantry that are functionally not moving. Okay, they didn't do too bad. All right, those pit bulls did pretty well. Those pit bulls got the infantry pretty well. Not bad at all. Double airfield! Oh, he goes mass pit bull into the double airfield. And uh, I'm starting to really like this game as not often do you go double pit bull into mass airfield. But you know what's good at killing harvesters? Pit bulls. You know what's also really good? Orcas. Eight orcas are really good at killing harvesters. Now, unfortunately for Valentin, he does not quite maybe realize that there are a bunch of rocket squads. He was probably hoping he, hoping that it's been all scorpions because scorpions do good versus pit bulls, but obviously rockets also do well versus pit bulls and they're cheaper. Uh, and in this case, they also do well versus orcas. So the orcas won't really be able to do anything about the rocket squads. They will have to commit in and probably a couple of them will die for the harvesters, but you can kill a lot of harvesters with eight orcas. We'll see how he does with landing those shots. Rockets coming in for the defense. Harvesters will not get that wonderful splash damage onto each other. Instead, the pit bulls will just have to kill the harvesters the old fashioned way, one by one. But this is so many pit bulls that they do kill the harvesters quite quickly. And the pit bulls have taken a lot of damage, but they are still rolling. They are still moving. And they are still hoping to escape. Another harvester is very low on health, but still alive as these rockets clean up the last of the pit bulls. One of those rockets even going heroic there as those pit bulls all explode into fire. Orcas in the north. I thought he would have gone for the south. I thought he was going or uh, pit bulls in the north and orcas in the south. There's only two harvesters here. Three harvesters, I guess. That, uh, that harvester is very invisible, but uh, we'll see what the orcas manage to get. Pitbulls in the middle of that, guarding that blue Tiberium. And there are the orcas. They're tiny on the mini-map. Yellow on the desert map does make it uh, difficult to see. 
you can of course go into like the minimap files and invert the uh and invert the color of the minimap so that you can see better but uh i don't have that i just have the normal minimap and the venom will get the scout he will see double airfield he is very low on health but he'll see double airfield he'll see the hammerheads and now nighthawk knows that this is coming he has got himself another flame tank coming out the first one didn't do very much but he's hoping the second one is really gonna save him goes uh goes tier two command uh goes air tower and then secret shrine doesn't go straight for the tier three doesn't go straight for the one clicks you know he could get these refineries with a uh, catalyst missile i'm pretty sure he could very easily get both of them and the tips uh, the tip flame tank does get spotted out the orca is also getting spotted out and oh they're going for the war factory not often do you see the orcas go for the war factory kill and now the power plant kill not what you expect uh that is three four harvesters that are sitting and waiting but uh i guess you only lose one orca if you go for the buildings and he did get the buildings and he only lost one orca so there's that builds eight orcas doesn't kill a single harvester with them sam sites coming in no tib core missile just yet we're not up to that tier three place quite yet. And the Black Hand Squad will clear out that building. Might even go ahead and burn down that Tib Spike. And the Blue Tiberium is being taken by Valentin. That's a lot of hammerheads. Are they loaded up with nothing? They're just empty hammerheads? Just vanilla heads? I can't even click on another one. Yeah, there's just there's nothing inside of there. Not riflemen, not rockets. I mean, you always can if you're if you're low on cash, produce a barracks. You know, make like five riflemen, sell it off. Make a watchtower, sell it off. You know, get get a couple of riflemen in there. With AP ammo, it will definitely up your damage output from just the base hammerhead. Obviously, rockets make them better. Zone troopers as well. But those can get a little bit more expensive and you don't get them from selling off buildings or don't get them from selling off cheap buildings, that is. Redeemer Engineering Facility out on the map and with a pretty explosive opening, we have hit a very passive mid game from these guys. Just the slow build up after that uh, very aggressive start to the match. Flank tank comes in, clears out that squad, and now maybe he'll go for the tip spike and uh, get that. And the tip spike has stopped producing because Valentin is completely full on Tiberium, as you can see with those Tiberium silos. They are maxed out, so he's getting no additional money. And the flank tank goes down. Bye bye, flank tank. All right, so I guess we're going to have a redeemer. And, uh, yeah. Welcome, J-Dark. Welcome, Burning the World. Welcome to the stream. Glad you guys were able to catch it live. It feels very late because uh, where I live, we just had Daylight Savings switch over. So we're now in uh, Standard Time. Man, that's a lot of hammerheads. <laughs> that's so many hammerheads. Uh, so now it gets dark super early. And uh, it is, uh, I guess it's seven o'clock now, but it was like, you know, five o'clock and the sun's down and it just makes you feel like it's so much later than it really is. An engineer grabs that other tip spike. Both of these guys evening up the economy here in the later stages, both of them at plus 12K. So that is their income per minute. By the way, big cheers to Double Evil and Drive for the overlay. Drive did the design. Uh, and Double Evil did the implementation and the actual coding to make it all work. So big thanks to those guys. Big cheers for those guys for all of their help. And we have got ourselves some Tib-infused Cabal-led Nod infantry. It's not a triple barracks, you know, man spam transition, but it is a comfortable amount of infantry and they do have a decent amount of firepower with all of those rockets included. Marv is on the way also. Barracks coming up. 
maybe some zone troopers inside of that marv maybe something else as uh posturing becomes the name of the game for this match harvester heads out starting a little bit of long distance harvesting and it's going to begin to be a catalyst missile hey these were the days when a catalyst missile could clean up two refineries with that spacing i think these days it wouldn't <laughs> one venom where did that venom come from he just snuck in and he just sniped an engineer basically out of nowhere and that is the lowest health harvester the venom might actually come in for the kill the pitbull's gonna try and save it and the venom's so low and the harvester survives with barely any hp he gets himself out of there. Rockets show up, but the Hammerheads and APCs are here in good numbers. AP Ammo doing a lot of work here to clear out the crowds. And it's going to be a Vapor Bomb on top of everything. He gets the Hammerheads. He gets the APCs. And man, if those Hammerheads hadn't been there, that would not have been worth it. That Vapor Bomb would have been the biggest waste of money we have seen in a long time. But he got that entire cloud of hammerheads however that was only the first wave you never send everything in the first wave you go for the second and in this case tip core missiles are good but this is just so many hammerheads although they are stacking quite a lot a lot of them low health red barely alive and just ready to explode as the hammerheads go for the hub instead of going for the individual turrets and those hammerheads getting shredded if you have the unit control you can target down the individual turrets with uh with waypoints to clean up the effectiveness of the sam before they've actually done very much damage and so you snipe the sam turrets and then the hub is still there and you have a little bit more time to deal with that but that's a lot more clicks and it's uh it's not something that's easy to do if you aren't well versed in the game and now i guess we get to see this nod firepower start to come alive is it really just this is all infrastructure he's got a redeemer and like six rockets and that is it i thought there were gonna be some avatars marching over here or something uh but he's just he's got one redeemer and like 10 rocket squads and that is uh that's pretty much it he honestly doesn't have all that many units for uh for how late game this is did the marv the marv did eventually get loaded up double zone trooper double engineer a classic combination man all those all those hammerheads that was just, that was just so many hammerheads what that harvester is doing he's just he's heard christmas break was coming and he's like ah eh? It's, uh, it's Christmas break now. It's not Christmas break later. It's Christmas break now. Beam cannons now out, and this, uh, this Marv doesn't really have any support nearby. He's committed way far in on enemy territory, and now he's gonna turn rear armor to the rockets, and... Well, he did die with his guns facing his enemy, but it just kind of doesn't matter. Not a great showing in that case. Not a, not a great use of a Marv. Stealth field comes in. Hammerhead swing through. Stealth redeemer, always nice to see. One hammerhead goes down, second hammerhead explodes, third is low on health, and the uh, the hand of Nod will get targeted down. I don't know, this might be a situation where you just leave this base alone and instead of committing more hammerheads into the attack. Yeah, I mean, you could try and hit this base over here. There's at least less SAM sites, and then you can start popping these power plants one by one. And I mean, you don't exactly know that when you first go in, but he's GDI, he's got that scan. He can go for the scan. Tip Spike did get grabbed back by the GDI player, but now it's being grabbed back back by the Nod player. 
And we've got these stealth tanks as well. Rage Gen fires off in the north. Railgun Predator is going to be tearing each other apart. Two of them at least going down. A pit bull and a predator tank. Now two pit bulls and a predator tank getting ripped apart there. I'm not sure what that was, but stealth tanks with Tibcor going to be able to clean up a Marv building and they will escape for a moment. Heading back out across the map, Zone Trooper in the response. Good, uh, good unit versus stealth tanks, but you just hate to get a Zone Trooper by selling off your Marv engineering facility. Firehawks dropping those bombs. They will be able to strato fighter away in a moment. Chemical plant is also here. Radar jamming missile fires off. Redeemer marches his way towards those airfields. He's gonna be able to like surprise these firehawks. Although the play of the pit bull comes in and he does get spotted. Rage Gen fires off, keeping those Firehawks. No, they do manage to get off the deck. The Harvester goes down, the Refinery goes down, and those Firehawks get off the deck just in time. They're going to drop their bombs. Not a big impact on a Redeemer, but the Redeemer will keep on moving. He's got that Engineer inside of him, and he now needs an exit plan. But at the very least, he has possibly caused the demise of these Firehawks who dropped all their bombs and now have nowhere to land. Predator tanks going down one by one. The Redeemer getting extremely low on health. Nice reverse moving from these tanks. Pitbulls not letting that Redeemer go back into stealth mode. And eventually, those Firehawks will go down and almost every single GDI unit goes down. One Pitbull, no, the Pitbull doesn't get the shot off. The Redeemer survives with so little HP. Valentin <laughs> gives up. That's it. That Redeemer survives with one HP. One more shot would have gotten it, but that will do it. That is it. Oh, man. Nighthawk with the comeback. Valentin with that amazing Pitbull opener. Not something we see every day and then wasn't able to close it out in the long term. And Nighthawk taking that center Tiberium field and rolling that into his late game win. And welcome now to Forgotten Forest. We're kicking it with another 2v2. And... Once again, we're not using a recolor feature. We are going to be letting them have their own colors, but it actually, it's going to work out. You guys will see. Playing green, playing GDI. This is Dion. Uh, he does have a slash in his name, so I like to kind of think, is this an FFA? Are they playing an FFA on a 2v2 map? What is going on? Okay, so uh, in the door, this is Syracuse. Uh, this is Baggio. And uh, on the other side, this guy playing Zocom is Champagne. Oh, I did not know that this was an FFA. <laughs> was so casual because I thought I had time to burn. But we got a guy playing Mark of Cain. Syracuse is playing Mark of Cain and just EMP'd his opponent's structures. Uh, no, this is a 2v2. Blue and green versus red and yellow. So the map spawns got messed up. Oh, so, okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a goofy start. That's why uh, that's why blue was building next to green and it didn't click in my head <laughs> for a minute there. But okay, all right, we've got it figured out. It is cross map spawns, but on a 2v2. And uh, Vexen says a crossed 2v2, but I kind of think a cursed 2v2 might be the better way of putting it. And I love the rush to theme cannon. Syracuse goes for the early EMPs, 
completely hamstringing Baggio here in his own main base. He has been able to deploy a refinery on the other side of the map, so he does have a little bit of income coming in, but he's going to be forced to sell his MCB. The beam cannons forced him to sell his MCB, so there goes the build radius. Now, this entire right side of the map is going to be under the control of Syracuse, and it also gives a little bit of a backdoor option here for Champagne to sneak over there with, I don't know, a, an expansion of some kind, drop a couple of buildings, maybe a barracks, maybe a refinery in a, in, a, in a war factory, and then he'll have a sort of backup there on the right side of the map under Syracuse's protection. Meanwhile, on the left side of the map, it's kind of 2v1, but it's two players who are splitting the income of one player. Baggio and Dion are in extremely awkward position. Champagne is not in a good spot. This is one of the worst refinery to Tib Field relationships I have ever seen in Kane's Rad. And of course, it's due to the extremely weird nature of this game. Goes for an airfield. You guys saw how badly those zone, uh, those Zorkas shot those bikes. Extremely wide misses. And uh, the bikes get everything on the deck, so goodbye to those orcas. That's kind of the end of the game for the aircraft, at least for the current moment. And there goes the Harvester as well. So Syracuse, this is his game, man. He's He's got one base and he's got it all to himself. However, Baggio and Dion now, uh, oh, these beam cannons. That's, uh, that's pretty aggressive for these beam cannons. There's a lot of pit bulls rolling up on them. The beams are able to pop the, uh, the pit bulls one by one. However, the bike's swinging in as well. It's too much damage from the GDI and Nod team. Which, by the way, Zocom marked of Kane. Not a very common pairing here for Kane's Wrath. That's not a very typical 2v2 kind of matchup that you would go for. And uh, in this case, uh, well, it it is it's a it's a weird one it's a weird one no matter what i don't even know that there's any conclusion you can draw about a zocom marked of cane combo when you're in this kind of cursed cross spawn situation it just it doesn't matter what the factions are there is nothing of value to be gained uh from all of this bikes getting sniped and uh, Champagne desperately, desperately trying to get this Harvester up and running. And now Dion is going to commit in. This is a lot of pit bulls, and this Harvester is going to unload. But unfortunately for Champagne, it doesn't seem like Champagne has been able to expand over to the right side of the map in any way. So it might have been better to drop this War Factory over on the right side and then sell off the MCV on the left side. Kind of a, you know, basically do exactly what Baggio did because Baggio, he hasn't rebuilt his war, his MCV, but he at least has a refinery over there. He at least has some stuff going on. He got at those bikes. He was able to kill off all of the orcas with his bikes over there on the left side of the map. Refinery finally, finally gets deployed. And yeah, that refinery should have been deployed a long time ago. Champagne, unfortunately, wasted a lot of time trying to harvest down from this field. And it just did not work out, but maybe now things can stabilize. Dion and Syracuse, uh, the most normal of these four players because they have not had to do the evacuation or the old switcheroo as the other players did. But now we're very close to a normal game, despite the fact that we're six minutes into it. Uh, despite that, we're very close to a normal game here on Forgotten Force. The only thing we don't have over here is a war factory to rebuild the MCV on the right side of the map. He could be going for that right now. Champagne, obviously, very, very low on income. Uh, he maybe got a tip spike earlier, but if he did, it was taken away from him. And, oh, no one has actually claimed this tip spike here. So Baggio could go ahead and claim that tip spike, and uh, that would give him a little bit of extra cash. He probably has other things on his mind, but uh, he does have an MCV now, so he is, you know, he's ready to rock and roll. But, yeah. Scorpion tanks out on the front line, laser turrets as well. 
By the way, if you're keeping score, this is 1.02 plus R19. So uh, the current version of R19 is R21. Uh, this is a little bit of an older game, but as when I go through my emails, I always start with the stuff that was sent to me uh, oldest, and I go through in order. So we are, yes, we are a little bit behind. And hey, Crane War Factory on the right side. Now we can sell his MCV, get the cash boost, put it into rebuilding his base over there on the right side. He might... I don't know, you also could maybe just try and walk your MCV over there. Like, at the very least, walk it to the middle of the map, and then you're in a, a slightly better position. Uh, meanwhile, Dion goes for the center field in the north. Goes for that expansion up there. Mind Drop comes in. Scorpion tanks eat all of it, except for that little, little chunk of mines there. I assume that was from the, uh, the attack earlier. The APC Pitbull attack from a couple of minutes ago. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, BB in the chat. New patches don't affect performance. By the way, if, you were, uh, if you're getting into Kane's Wrath in 2023, there are some switches you can flip if you have, uh, you know, the NVIDIA control panel or the AMD equivalent. There are some switches you can flip uh, playing around in the program settings to make the game feel a little, little bit more responsive, you know, like uh, force off certain features like uh, lock refresh. And Scorpion Tank's going to be coming in here. A couple of Harvesters are here. Scorpions mostly just trading against APC Pitbull, which is going to be happy for the Scorpions. They've got Dozer Blades, and a lot of these APCs and Pitbulls have very low HP. Scorpion's going to be feeling good about this trade overall. Reinforcement's going to be coming in. The Scorpions may not have the numbers to keep holding on forever, but they're happy to trade against those. And okay, they do need to dodge these Sonic Emitter shots. It would be nice if they could get a couple more Harvesters on exit. That's going to be two Harvesters down, and these are expansion Harvesters that are very relevant for the later stages of this game. Scorpion Tank's going to be backing on off, trying to get out of range of that Sonic Emitter. And the Sonic Emitter now going to be boxing in these Scorpions. Happy to do it. Happy to see the Scorpions get boxed in and now destroyed. And the Scorpions looking good for a minute there, but ultimately not going to do as much as they would have liked. They did get two Harvesters. They, you know, they got three, four, five Harvesters down to about half HP. But those other three Harvesters that are just wounded, they are not dead. They are still working. And uh, someone called in something. I don't know if that's Champagne calling in an Orca Strike. Okay, he has rebuilt up to airfields. He's got himself double airfield in the south. Deployed a little base right there on the edge of the map, right at that blue Tiberium. Catalyst missile comes in as well, gets both refineries in that position. And uh, I don't know if it would have gotten both of them if uh, that one hadn't been weakened, but maybe that was right on the edge of being too close together to avoid the snipe of that, of that uh, tip catalyst missile. Orcas in formation, rolling out. Seven orcas can snipe a lot awesome. of harvesters. Let's see if he gets it. Tip bang detonation just went off and grabs three, two or three harvesters there right on the deck. Gets the refinery as well. And now Dion, the only thing that he's got is this Marv in terms of income at this expansion. Three refineries going down in about one minute's time for Dion. His income was looking good for most of this game, but it is going to be slouching over the course of the next minute or two. Zorkas come out. They're going to be able to clean up the infantry. If those rockets hold still, the Zorkas absolutely destroy them. They just annihilate those infantry hordes. They get so stacked up, and then these Zorkas just splash damage them to death, no problem. Orcas get spotted in the south. Ceramic armor has just been purchased by uh, Champagne. 
And so he's going to be feeling uh, pretty good. Radar jamming missile fires off for one of our Nod players. And the expansions in the south, they're coming online. They're becoming more and more relevant. Upgraded power plants going to be getting sniped. Ceramic armor orcas, they're, uh, they're pretty beefy. Well, they can't survive forever. One, two do go down, but honestly, not too bad considering the harvesters they got plus those power plants. Eh, power plants, not the biggest deal in the world, but always nice to get that extra bit of damage. And only losing two orcas for it is uh, certainly not the end of the world for Champagne. Not that Champagne has been doing great this game, but we can forgive uh, any of the slowness of the economy considering how weird of an opening we had in this. He's going for more. I've never seen someone so dedicated to sniping power plants, uh, especially this late in the game. EMP lands on that Marv, a second EMP to follow it up. Stealth Field to go for the kill on the Enlightened, but the Enlightened are tough enough that Baggio could not insta-kill those enlightened Syracuse drops the voice of Kane as well not something we see very often but it gives huge benefits to infantry especially infantry like the enlightened they don't have supercharged particles just yet they're going to be holding off these bikes and these pit bulls the EMP extremely useful and those Zorkas find the kill on the Marv as well and that Marv getting just sniped basically by those orcas coming in from the side and they get the kill and look at that those tip troopers and the enlightened what a combo with the fast leg upgrade they move quick and they hit hard and they are hard to kill zone raiders coming in marv is 99 percent done so this could be a zone raider marv out onto the field and the Zone Raiders are just going to be kind of heading for the hills. Stealth Tank comes in, gonna get himself a power plant. And uh, man, that, that Marv kill was just fantastic by those Orcas. Stealth Tank does end up getting sniped there. Zorkas plus a Marv can be an extremely powerful combination. Zone Raiders not inside of this Marv, neither are the Engineers. Oh, Zorka's gonna be spending a lot of their shots on the bikes. I feel like the, the Marv could have dealt with the bikes and the Orcas could have unloaded on something else. And okay, well, one of the Zone Raiders did jump inside of that Marv. The other Zone Raiders, I'm not sure where they went. They ran off up here to the north. And, uh, well, they're going to be here ready and waiting for these Harvesters. A couple of Harvesters going to be taking some damage here. And there's nothing. Well, the APCs are here to kill off the Zone Raiders, but not before the Zone Raiders get two Harvesters, three Harvesters from the GDI player. Sonic Emitter gets deployed, but it's low power mode for Champagne. And the Zone Raiders will eventually be overwhelmed. But this Marv hasn't been stopped here on the left side of the map. They are concerned about this middle of the map expansion as Syracuse and Champagne both show up with harvesters to this southern contested Tiberium field. And that's a fourth harvester from Dion that goes down. Stealth comes in or Stealth Reveal comes in. Will allow that Marv to actually see those harvesters and take them out a little bit more quickly. And this is gonna be a quad zone raider Marv. Not something you see very often. And uh, I'm not sure where that fourth zone raider did not jump in there. They ran right up and then they just backed away. And I guess, okay, a different zone raider set went into that Marv. I'm not sure why that ended up happening. And, uh, well, the bike can dodge basically infinite Zorka shots as they will head back home and find a place to land. Syracuse mock army. You'll love to see it. Unfortunately, they don't shoot up, so the hammerhead is a pretty potent answer to that marked of Kane infantry. And honestly, I would love some kind of mobile repair along with this Marv, either, either an MCV that packs along to build war factories or, uh, or a rig or anything to uh, heal up that Marv because with Zone Raiders and no engineers, 
it can very easily get overwhelmed even by a lot of rockets the mp could be coming in as well if the shockwave artillery is ready from champagne or uh, from dion champagne calls in the supersonic airstrike one of the hammerheads does survive and the marv is able to escape no emp to lock it down and he will be able to just walk away from the front line barracks there slingshots champagne just sends in slingshots as it looks like uh they have been defeated baggio has been defeated as well champagne and syracuse will get the win over dion and baggio and uh well <laughs> they fought it out but man what a weird game and then it just turns into uh kind of an action-packed 2v2 definitely a weird one overall but a fun one to watch and welcome to tournament dust bowl for a 1v1 in the north playing gdi this is senna playing under the smurf rain man and in the south playing marked of kane give it up for master leaf this is one of those games that feels extremely familiar i did a quick search on the <laughs> i did a quick search on the channel and uh well it doesn't seem like this i've casted this game before but i don't know it seems very familiar so which by the way we'll just uh we'll do that so now they're actually oriented correctly but yeah gdi versus marked of kane this is an r19 game so this is 1.02 plus r19 it's a little bit older but uh you know we'll just sort of see what happens but i have cast a lot of master leaf versus senna games so to some extent anytime i see these guys play i'm like have i already seen this game is this one is this one one that i've already seen and uh you never know but yeah we'll see You know what I'm thinking of? I'm thinking of Rex versus Masterly on this map. I'm like pretty certain that that's what I was thinking of. This is the Cyber Rex Cy versus Masterly. Yeah. Which was a downtown Dust Bowl game. And uh, I think that's what I'm thinking of. All right, well, let's return to this game and see what happens here. Welcome to Outlaw R1 in the chat, who's definitely not Outlaw number one in the chat. But uh, Senna versus Master Leaf, Mark Duquesne versus GDI, and thus far, everything is looking pretty normal, pretty, pretty typical. This is one of those matchups that can go wonky because Master Leaf is in it. And sometimes he does go for, he's cooked up something weird. He's cooked up something specific and you just never know what it's going to be. But, you know, it also uh, is sometimes just a very normal game. It's just a macro kind of thing. And uh, yeah, that's what we're looking at right here two macro oriented openers we'll see how heavy they go into the harvesters as they transition over towards their natural expansions emp coming in but just a couple of awakened squads nothing to worry about in the grand scheme of things it's not like it's uh you know somehow paired with a flame tank rush which of course marked of cane don't have but there's nothing too weird. Master Leaf isn't doing like a EMP Reckoner rush where he gets the rocket and the engineer inside of the Reckoner and then camps out on top of your harvesters and drops a bunch of EMPs as well. Ooh, he is going Secret Shrine. 
So it could be going fast legs pretty much right out of the gate. It's not a rush rush to fast legs, but it is quicker than we would typically see them from most other players. Uh, two refineries at the natural from Senna. He's got that AP ammo on the way. He's got the airfield coming in as well. Buggies are going to swing in. Buggies might see absolutely everything that there is in their shadow teams in the north. And man, this feels similar. But uh, yeah, I did just walk into a shadow team rush of Master League versus Bart Jones. And perfect execution by Masterleaf here. He walks in with the buggies. And he gets the snipe on the airfield. That is perfect. But you notice the timing, right? The buggies come in first about five seconds before the shadow teams get there. All eyes on the buggies. Checking out these buggies and then boop. You get him with the little backdoor shadow team. You just shadow your way into his airfield. And now we are going with Enlightened. And again, this feels extremely familiar, but maybe this is just an amalgamation of Master Leaf games. We got fast legged Enlightened, and he's also going for an outpost. If the APC is committed, that's a big EMP. That's a triple on the EMP as he locks down all of these APCs, all of these Predator tanks. He goes for the tier three and the voice of Kane to add insult to injury. <laughs> the entire column gets lit up and Masterly finds his big win. The snipe on the airfield is a perfect delay tactic. And then he goes with the light up on that column and Senna hits back he gets himself that one awakened squad supercharged particle beam could very well be on the way that would be the upgrade of choice for master leaf and uh, master leaf and Senna both of them rocking very solid economies behind all of this looking very good in the income graph and ooh, a couple of uh, a couple of hammerheads but they're getting caught out shooting at uh buggies which is not what you want emp comes in enlightened are here they are not supercharged as of yet they will be able to insta kill that watchtower and sam sites also going to be coming in here avatars as well ready to defend the homeland ready to make everything safe and more emps two watchtowers are here still no supercharged particle beams uh, okay he has now got supercharged particle beams finishing up and now these enlightened squads are that much more powerful juggernauts are on the menu there and they are here to stay senna desperately wants to make this his third base he is completely dry back at home both fields empty as he looks for a third to make his own Masterleaf has not brought his MCV up here. He's just been working off that build radius, and it looks like long distance harvesting over there at the main, or at the third base. Supercharged particle beam Venom's gonna be putting a little bit of damage out on to that Marv, but that Marv has engineers inside of it. And the shadow team's coming down. They're gonna kind of get run over by that harvester. So a little bit annoying there for Masterleaf as these supercharged particle beam venoms look for some targets in the soft base of Senna. Vertigo's coming in. All right, tier three gets sniped. Vertigo's pulling in. Where are they going for? And they'll go for the juggernaut. I guess one juggernaut. There's the second juggernaut as Masterly finally finds his mark. And uh, Venom's to snipe the husks. Yeah, there we go. Venom's to snipe the husks. Gets the kill in the APC. Will uh, kind of chase those Venoms out of town. Small assortment of units heading out. Senna going to be powering his third base eco partially with a Marv but he is going to be looking for something a little bit more long term and master leaf intentionally or not kind of has his stealth harvesters doing some sneaky harvesting emp comes in and this marv is going to be taking a lot of heat 
from these enlightened squads. <laughs> EMP locks down that Marv, but it still crushes a Harvester, which is not something you see very often. There's a pit bull here, but you need something a bit more powerful than a pit bull to knock down all this infantry. And uh, the Venoms are here as well to add their uh, extra bit of damage. And this Marv extremely low on health, barely alive, comes out of EMP just in time to die. And unfortunately for Senna, that was a pretty expensive harvester that he just lost. That Marv didn't do much in this world. He harvested a bit of this field, and before he even got to have his first significant fight, he got taken offline and he got knocked out of this world. And now Sneaky Venoms are gonna come in and snipe the tier three. Not something you see very often. Venom's rushing in, but of course they had the shadow teams to cover for them. And uh, it's not quite low power mode for Senna. He's got a decent amount of extra power, almost 50 extra units of electricity. So it's gonna take a couple more upgraded power plants before he's offline, although maybe not as he adds more and more of these AA batteries into the mix. Master Leaf has finally expanded out to the left side of the map, but Senna is doing that as well. And Senna outstripping Master Leaf in the economy department, 18,000 credits ahead in total resources gathered. But a lot of that money isn't here on the map. Senna has also lost a pretty significant amount of value, but uh, does he have juggernauts or something? He really doesn't have anything too crazy out on the map. He's got a lot of APCs, that is for sure. He's got a couple of riflemen as well. Vertigo Bombers are watching overhead, and there are beam cannons here as well. So Master Leaf is going to try and defend this base with a very unorthodox amount of units, but that was a lot of APCs that just exploded from those Vertigos. And the APCs now going to be trying to descend upon these beam cannons, but there is at least one avatar, a dual beam avatar here to burn down those APCs. And behind all of this, oh, it's just shadow teams shooting up a command post. I guess eventually they will kill it, but uh, I think it's going to be a little bit while, a little while before they get the kill on that command post. And Master Leaf, with this extremely weird and wonky attack, is I guess just burning through all of the cash that Senna has because Senna is drawing a zero on his bank account despite the fact that he has had very good income throughout this entire game. He is bottomed out right now and he doesn't have a whole lot to show for it. He's got a lot of watchtowers to show for it, but he doesn't have a whole lot to show for it overall. Master Leaf, on the other hand, is also scraping by. He's not necessarily some uh, some rich guy with a ton of units, despite the fact that uh, he's killed a ton of stuff from Senna. He never really got a third base up and running the way he wanted. And so this is just a weird, scrappy, very low eco feeling game, despite the fact that both of these guys have actually harvested a lot of Tiberium. This dual beam avatar ranking up to veteran off of those watchtowers, APCs, and that war factory. Now he's going to get a couple of shots. Uh, what was that? I think <laughs> that vertigo bomber just bombed out that rifleman squad as the avatar was walking over top of it. And this avatar just chewing through these watchtowers. Man, dual beam avatars just kind of break the the uh, the equation for value, the value equation for avatars. They just do so much more than a regular avatar. He's gotten himself up to elite as these last straggling units from Senna look for value. Senna now floating 8K in the bank. I'm guessing at some point in the last couple of minutes, he's sold off most of his production. Okay, no, he does have two war factories over here. Pumping out a lot of pit bulls. 
and uh, maybe he sold off his MCV that was over there, or he just took it away. But the Harvester goes down, the refinery is going to be going down as well, and this Avatar is going to scare away that Harvester also. And look at that, the command post survived it all. Despite the fact that there was a shadow team shooting at it for so long, it did survive. And nope, it looks like Senna's MCV just got sent over here to the right side of the map. Venoms show up and they'll be providing a little bit of overwatch here as they overwatch themselves go down. And uh, as this MCV rolls towards Master Leaf's main base, goodbye to the air tower and goodbye to the threat of vertigos, as I assume that is what Senna was hoping to avoid, because last time, the vertigos nearly flattened an army of this size. Senna keeps rolling, rolling deep into Master Leaf's base, and Master Leaf, he's also quite well produced on power plants, so he is, a no th he is under no threat of uh, going offline by just a couple of them being destroyed. You're gonna have to get more than that as he adds more and more laser turrets on. It's gonna be a dual beam avatar, which just deletes anything and everything that is out on the map. And that War Factory was not long for this world. And these APCs are not long for this world. The Pitbulls better run and hide because a dual beam, fully heroic avatar is headed their way. Pop, pop. As these avatar, as the avatar closes in, the APCs go down. And now Senna with 1600 in the bank uh, not a whole lot of Tiberium left to harvest, and he has to kill off a dual beam avatar. But his MCV will be at full health, so he at least has that going for him. Barracks gets deployed right onto the front line. It almost doesn't even have time to do anything as the dual beam avatar just burns down everything around it. And he barely even looks at these units and they explode. The laser animation doesn't even play as Senna, as Senna commits everything into this attack. He's down to half health, rockets, watchtowers, pit bulls, everything committed into this attack. And now he's going for the crush. The watchtowers are here. The venoms are here to clear up what's left. And the hero avatar still stands. The watchtowers go down. One by one, and the Harvester gets sniped as well. A fresh barracks, but it's gonna be the MCV that pays the price as this hero avatar barely alive with just an, a single, a single digit of health. Watchtowers, barracks, everything that possibly can be given, and Senna sells his MCV as the hero avatar marches on, looking for his next target. Uh, what else you got? It looks like Senna might be saying nothing at all as he fires sails and gets on out of there. Avatar is back up to about third HP as Master Leaf chases away Senna's harvesters. Oh, and that's it. Senna has been defeated. The hero avatar beats everything. Master Leaf with the double beam avatar. That's the only unit he needs. Ranks it up to full heroic status. And man, look at that economy difference. <laughs> and it just didn't matter. The dual beam avatar made up for 60,000 credits almost. That's the difference between these guys. <laughs>